Greetings, Greg here. Today's talk focuses on a comparison between the Tesla Mule and an ICE vehicle in terms of basic cost of operation. We have some other cleanup items relative to the Mule that are worth discussing as well. So stay tuned for another Tesla Fan Insight video. Greetings, this is Greg for Tesla Fan Insight. The Gates for States. Bonjour and Ni Hao Ma, German, French, and Chinese. Thanks for taking time out once again to, to uh, catch up with us at Tesla Fan Insight. I, today's talk is really focused on taking a closer look at the mule to clean up a few things that popped up that were may not, not obvious at first blush. The first thing I'd like to review is the fact that if you watch the video a few times, you'll notice that the truck that we saw is in a place called Sunnyvale, California. So the headquarters of Tesla's in Palo Alto and the manufacturing plant in Fremont um, happens to have a city called Sunnyvale, which is almost directly midpoint between the two places. So I thought this was kind of an interesting phenomenon because in general, Elon Musk has made it a point of referencing all of the activities for the truck to the Hawthorne facility where he has SpaceX. And what this really shares is the fact that, in fact, a lot of the work, maybe all the work, is being done near the main factory. And I think this kind of makes sense given the fact that the management of Tesla that needs to stay on top of this, particularly on the engineering side, is all sitting in Palo Alto or possibly at the factory and them having access to the vehicle and everything it's doing is pretty critical. So for those of you who are good with a camera, I would say that there's a Tesla uh, bat cave of some sort that you can find someplace in the Sunnyvale area, more on the warehouse industrial side of the city. Uh, and those videos uh, are great to see and uh, valuable because everybody wants to see more of what this truck can do. The next thing I'd like to cover is the fact that I was wondering why it was that if you watch most of so the test runs that are being done by Mercedes and others on trucks, they've noticeably avoided putting freight shipping trailers on the back end of these vehicles. And so I got to thinking about, well, why is, are they doing this? And yes, it's a form factor that many people choose to use because probably 25% of the freight out there is uh, shipping containers that are at different ports around the world that are being moved to new locations uh, or directly to customers. So it's definitely a needed activity, but the question was, why bother doing it, particularly when you're dealing with a mule? And the answer to this is that, I believe, is that I, I feel like there's a nightmare coming, which is Tesla ships at least half of its products out of the, out of the country, definitely out of California. And so what this means is that they have shipping going on on trucks, but they also have a large amount of shipping going by ship globally. So Tesla, one way that Tesla can implement this new truck efficiently is to actually become its own customer. So instead of seeing all those line items for shipping costs, they can eliminate those shipping costs by bringing that shipping activity in-house on their own trucks. And what a better way to test it than large amounts of product movements from all their different factories as well as to the port. This is also big because in Oakland, California, which is primarily, I think, where their vehicles are being shipped from, one of the problems that they have is older tractor trailers that move this freight tend to be heavy polluters. And so there's been a battle on how to get rid of them. 
So Tesla's choice of using the freight vehicle and optimizing on that to some extent, I think is kind of a smart move because while it doesn't represent something you would move, I, I was expecting some kind of a white, you know, regular size container that a semi pulls. And the freight container is an important area because freight locations on the ports are some of the heaviest pollution situations there are. And those, I kind of thought they wouldn't use this because freight tends to move as short as five or 10 miles, but as long as several hundred miles in these containers. So the form factor and optimization on it may not be a bad idea. The next thing I'd like to cover is costs of operation and just a quick sketch on some numbers that we might want to think about. In the case of the mule, one assumption we could make, for example, is that from the Tesla plant to Los Angeles is about 300 miles. So if we look at 250 a gallon for fuel, for the 300 miles, it's $125, assuming that we get six miles per gallon for, for the semi. From what I'm calculating, the cost of moving an electric truck, moving that same freight on the electric truck, is approximately $20 in electricity. So at issue is if you're a shipper and you have to choose between base cost of $20 for that 300 mile trip or $125, I think it's pretty clear and compelling as to why people want to move all that freight over to electricity. And also let's consider the fact that that difference in cost in fuel is enough ammunition when you have a vehicle going 300,000 miles a year, that's enough ammunition as a reason for people to change. But then we could jump over and start to look at the impact of regenerative braking, fewer uh, parts that are operating, etc. So I just thought that was kind of interesting that without any other activity going on at all, just the reduction in cost makes it um, a hugely compelling solution for all of the major shippers to move over to electric. The last thing I'd like to cover today is what J.B. Strobel call the scalability of what Tesla does. So kind of on the last topic, one of the things I was hoping for is that Tesla wouldn't make themselves the customer because they can start generating outside dollars, which helps the company succeed by having outsiders pouring cash in the company rather than, if you will, vertically integrating further and it doesn't give them outside capital with which to work. One of the things Dave B. Storable brought up was the fact that uh, there's a scalability to everything Tesla does in trucks where you can take parts being used for the Model 3, configure them both engine and parts along with battery packs to build the semi. This is highly unusual compared to what the old or what's currently done. Most of the parts that go into a semi truck don't fit uh, what goes into cars. So as a result, you have parts in the truck that are designed for long distances that can be swapped out and tolerances and so forth are higher, size is bigger, etc. So most competitors are not in the business of moving uh, readily parts from one section of the company to the other with ease. That is not the case. And I think this is kind of interesting because it also introduces the possibility of the fact that competitors may have to seriously consider vertically integrating in this manner to address the Tesla threat. And that's you, Mercedes, who I think is the best of breed in terms of competitors that are out there. So basically what's happening right now is that there's a competition to see which form factor will get the most batteries and other parts. The winner right now will be the Model 3. Based on how compelling the semi truck is in terms of the numbers and if it's working properly when we see it on November 16th, 2017, I believe there's a chance that you end up with Model 3s rolling off, but many customers not being happy on the 
vehicle side or consumer side because I just think that there's a lot of trucking companies that have a huge incentive to give Tesla any cash it wants to get a hold of these vehicles because when you're pumping 500,000 miles a year in, on the road, the impact of fuel costs on the decline in the manner that I just described is just too great to, to turn down. That about covers it today in terms of what I wanted to look at as we reviewed the mule uh, that came out, you know, really shows capability of this truck. We do have a few other pointers to cover, for example, taking a look at the mule's battery setup versus how that would fit into the vehicle design that we've seen that represents what Tesla's going to be offering uh, in November. Look forward to any comments you might have. This is Greg for Tesla Fire Insight. Chus Maxkut, au revoir, Lehitro, Choda Hafez.